Good morning. Can you guys see me okay? Great, awesome. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two of Accelerate. Thanks for your time to attend this session. I am Sudhakar Jukanti. I manage CPQ and e-commerce team in Aptos Professional Services. I am responsible for delivering successful e-commerce implementations. With me, I have two e-commerce experts on stage, Myra Smalley and Leela Parvataneni. Myra is a research analyst with Nucleus Research, focused on marketing automation, customer relationship management, e-commerce, and other cloud applications. Myra performs in-depth, financially-focused analysis of real-world software deployments to publish return on investment case studies. She also performs high-level market research and publishes guidebooks. Prior to joining Nucleus, uh, Myra worked in business in technology and video game development industries. She also worked as an analyst in um, oil and gas uh, sector. Leela is um, director of customer facing applications at Align Technology, which produces um, the global Invisalign invisible clear uh, braces. He has been with the company for around 10 years and currently managing the customer facing applications, focusing on e-commerce, order management, and promotion management, uh, which are all built on Aptus uh, Intelligent Cloud. With this, I um, over this to Myra. Salivas. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you, Sudhakar. As Sudhakar said, uh, my name is Moira Smalley. I'm an analyst at Nucleus Research. Uh, so I recently did a guidebook on Aptus e-commerce. Uh, so I thought I would start by telling you a little bit about Nucleus and what exactly we do, um, the methodology behind our research, and then launch into the findings of the guidebook. So we were founded in 2000 in Boston, and we're actually still there despite the weather. <laughs> um, and we are a third-party technology research firm similar to others that you may be familiar with like Gartner and Forrester. But while others tend to be a bit more qualitative in their approach to evaluating technologies, we tend to be more quantitative. We're really concerned with the value that technology delivers and to that end conduct in-depth financially focused ROI case studies uh, where we conduct 60-minute uh, interviews with customers. Um, we're the only firm registered with the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy which means basically that we measure value the same way that the CFO would. We've actually published over 600 ROI case studies at this time. And as Sudhakar mentioned, we uh, perform other research as well, such as guidebooks, uh, like the one that we wrote recently on Aptus e-commerce. So the situation in B2B e-commerce right now is that uh, in the B2B space, e-commerce is going from a nice to have to a must have. And that's really because of the buyer. The buyer is more heavily influenced by his personal and his or her personal buying decisions uh, than ever before. So we talked to customers and found that 30% of them uh, actually prefer to make complex, configurable B2B purchases online as opposed to direct with a salesperson. And if a provider does not offer an e-commerce capability, they're likely to go elsewhere. So that's important for B2B companies to know that you know, they risk losing business for those 30% of people that prefer to make their purchases online. Uh, and realistically, that number is only growing. But it's not just about this online e-commerce storefront. It's really important to have a uh, tightly integrated um, e-commerce and quote to cash solution much in the way that we did research in the CRM space, that, and we found that when CRM is integrated tightly with quote to cash applications, um, such as CPQ, CLM, and billing, um, the ROI is up to four times higher. We found that customers are more likely to experience positive returns when they pair uh, e-commerce with quote to cash applications, and also when they take advantage of intelligent capabilities and advanced analytics, like those that are found in the Aptus Intelligent Cloud. So launching into some of the benefits, uh, when we do research, we're really interested in the benefits that customers experience from their actual real world implementations. So we started off by asking uh, companies whether or not their customers had benefited from Aptus e-commerce. And they said across the board that their customers have benefited from a more seamless, um, frictionless experience, uh, online experience. 
they have also benefited because these companies now have more insight into the preferences of their customers and are able to deliver much more personalized buying, uh, omni-channel buying experiences for them. We also found that Aptis e-commerce helped to shorten the sales cycle and it did this by shortening the amount of time that it takes to do one of the most time consuming aspects of the sales cycle, which is quote development. So we found that on average across companies, it shortens the amount of time to develop quotes by 99%, which is actually over 30 percentage points more than when quote to cash is leveraged alone. Another benefit that we found was that Aptis e-commerce enabled companies to increase visibility to certain aspects of their product catalog that were formerly dormant or um, not performing optimally in terms of sales. One manufacturing company, for example, 17% uh, of their product suite was just not getting any sales. So when they put it um, up online with Aptis e-commerce, they found that uh, customers were able to interact with the product themselves. Um, and even though it was a, a bit of, of a more complex aspect of their catalog, uh, customers were much more able to understand it. And um, they started experiencing sales to that 17% of their uh, catalog that formerly was dormant before. Um, so customers found that Aptis e-commerce was a great way to increase sales to targeted areas of their product suite. Another benefit and something that probably matters to you as either current customers or people considering implementing Aptis e-commerce was that Aptis e-commerce helped to uh, cut costs for customers that we spoke with. So it did this by enabling them to either uh, reallocate current employees to more value-added tasks or by enabling them to avoid hiring additional employees. For example, in the area of developers, um, with all the customers that we spoke to, uh, it enabled them to, on average, avoid over $380,000 uh, annually in uh, developer costs that they would have needed um, in order to either maintain legacy systems or uh, actually build new e-commerce systems for them. It also enabled them to save over $420,000 annually in avoided marketing and salespeople costs. And overall, this enabled companies to circumvent the need to increase staff by anywhere from 3 to 5%. Another manufacturing company that I spoke with, actually, um, they had a legacy e-commerce solution, but still 70% of their sales were happening internally with their staff. Um, so when they implemented Aptis e-commerce, they were able to um, put with the uh, um, self-service capabilities of Aptis e-commerce, they were able to sort of put some of that burden back onto the customers themselves and uh, reallocate the employees that were formerly spending so much of their time just going through the ordering process for customers uh, to other more value-added tasks that ultimately ended up increasing revenue overall for them. So we also talked to customers about why they chose Aptis e-commerce over other uh, B2B e-commerce solutions. And we found that it boiled down to three things. And those are platform, scalability, and partnership. When we talked to customers about uh, platform, they said that it was really this cart to cash, uh, as Aptis calls it, experience, which is this tightly integrated um, self-service uh, e-commerce and quote to cash platform. Um, they said that it was this capability and the fact that they were able to uh, not only have an e-commerce solution, but also leverage and integrate other quote to cash applications like CPQ or CLM um, that they either already currently have or are considering uh, buying in the future. And also that they were able to take advantage of uh, intelligent capabilities that enable them to garner more insights into customers' preferences and buying habits uh, and deliver a more personalized experience to their customers. Um, and that was enabled by the Aptis Intelligent Cloud for them. Also, a lot of the customers that we talked to were already Salesforce or Microsoft customers. So they were looking for a partner solution uh, because it you know, made integration much simpler and smoother. The other reason was scalability. So all of the customers that we talked to were going through periods of rapid growth, as I'm sure many of you have as well, are, are as well. Um, and enabling Aptis e-commerce to help them as they grew by taking some of the burden off of their internal teams um, was huge for them. And lastly, partnership. All of the companies that we spoke with said that when they compared um, their interactions with Aptis to their interactions with other vendors, that right off the bat they got a great feeling from Aptis and that Aptis really helped them develop um, personalized solutions for their unique business needs. So now I'll turn it over to Leela.
thank you, Moira. Uh, so most of your research um, helps us because I looked at the same three years back when I moved to Aptos is one of the key areas where we focused is on like where I'm spending most of the time in faster to market, getting to the customers is where exactly, and we actually articulated well what other clients and customers are thinking about, which is very good. So uh, just about myself, I'm uh, Leela. Um, I manage the customer facing applications at Align Technology. So Align Technology is the largest producer of invisible braces. Uh, we branded them as Invisalign, and uh, we are mostly into the digital marketing, and as well as producing digital products like iTero, intraoral scanning, the digital, and as well as we work with mostly our orthodontics and dental professionals, where we want to bring beautiful smiles to the patients who come and want to treat, they straighten the teeth, and uh, not used to use the conventional whites and brackets, but use invisible braces. So, so far we have treated uh, close to four and a half million patients around the globe. We're a global company. And because we do treat directly with the customers, which is our doctors, they need some comp type of e-commerce to manage their day-to-day -day practice management in terms of how do they grow their practice by providing their day-to-day -day regular practice management stuff, in addition their order management. So we have built an e-commerce platform on top of Aptos and uh, that is supporting most of our customers to help to grow their practice in terms of buying their day-to-day -day needs. Um, so typically like everybody, we also had a little bit of challenges a few years back because we are going expansion to markets. And one of the challenges we face is mostly on configuration of adding a product and mostly manage in the old systems, in our old legacy, in our ERP. And what we faced is it takes weeks and months to follow the process, getting price, and then everything is burdened on the IT side. Though the business come back and say, here are the details I wanted to launch, and they give you a timeline with the typical process of four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, oh, I cannot do this quarter end, I cannot do this month end. So they could do a lot of, and the marketing wants to do more in terms of how to drive the business into the practice, into the doctor's office. That's when we're looking at opportunities, that's when we want to use Aptos as our backend in terms of managing from our e-commerce perspective and as well as order to cash. So the previous issues, what we used to face, hopefully most of you have addressed the same, and I think I also see that from Moria, most of the customers are in the same set of issues are inefficient, I'm using an e-commerce with an outdated platform. Upgrade takes longer time. There are typical installations. I need to manage on the infrastructure side where I need to spend more time on operating on patching servers. I need to scale, then I need to host it in a different infrastructures and everything. I don't want to do that. I'm not in going to in the, doing the type of business of managing the servers. Second thing is inability to get market quickly. I want something to go to the market. So somebody comes to me and say like, I want to do a promotion. So instead of me, okay, why can't you business do it? What's, your, what's deriving it that? So we want something like a self-technology tools that can help the business drive it where IT is only helping them in terms of building the foundation. So that's where we want to help them to go to the market fast. The other one is custom coding. So in the old legacy ones, we used to do a lot of custom coding, and which I'm not against, but I want to spend more on the quality on maintaining it rather than if there is something off the shelf, I would definitely want to use it rather than building my own. So this is where exactly I leverage Aptos being my back end, managing all my pricing promotions in terms of everything. I only manage the front end part in terms of configuration, UI, UX elements, focusing on the market, local needs, and that's what I focus on. The other big thing is the long lead time in terms of configuring products. We would like to make sure it's quick and easy rather than making weeks, testing cycles and all those things instead of that you go configure it, manage it, and then move on. The last thing is the expansion of different products and everything. Uh, supporting of the expansion in terms of global markets and all those things. So I would like to have it go faster into the markets because that's where you want to go. So that's why we leverage Aptos as a backend in terms of managing all our e-commerce as well as order management solutions. So with that said, I think uh, the biggest things which we get the flexibility of using, the Aptos e-commerce is mostly on one system of records for multiple channels where I have all my pricing, promotions, everything confined in one place. I can differentiate between regions, what products to go to each region. Uh, the business rules allowing them based on their order volume. Let's say there are some customers who do very little business, but we don't want to have show all the products to them, so I can have the configuration rules. Um, that allows to much easier to configure. Another thing is the cost and maintenance has definitely has reduced because I'm no longer managing a pricing and promotion engine, managing it, 
from a security perspective or infrastructure perspective are no longer managed. That has reduced the cost. Now going back to one of the uh, points that Moria mentioned is on the reduced cost in IT resources. Yes, definitely it has reduced. It doesn't mean that we're getting rid of resources. We are using it them wisely in terms of using in other areas because we're expanding glo globally. So right now I have like four e-commerce sites supporting globally and we're trying to expand into different market regions, the way how it goes. Because if you look at local markets, they also want to have e-commerce in different, and they have different needs. So based on the different needs, we split them into separate. So we are right now three e-commerce and we'll be planning to expand like four more band up this year. And the last one is improved responsiveness and faster time to market. Yep, by getting all these things, what you get out of it is, you get faster time to market. So now, another thing is, which are the biggest benefit you get is the reporting part of it is also another thing, which we notice it, what is the usage of it from the order volume perspective, what is the promotions being used, what are the dollar amount you use, what is the sales, you can get complete analytics and reporting on a day-to-day -day timely fashion, and that helps you to see where the growth is. And it tells you like what products are doing much faster so that at least it helps to backend system to manage the inventory and everything and it's completely seamless. If you look at it, how Aptas integrate with other systems. So right now we have Aptas integrated with our Salesforce and as well as our Microsoft funneling and as well as with our ERP, which is our SAP, it integrates with our order management that tells the list of orders, types of orders that comes in. So it's a lot of benefits that we at least, and we've been using it for the last 12 months and we haven't faced any issues in terms of either from the business or from us saying that, okay, that we want to launch something, IT is a bottleneck, or let's say the platform is a bottleneck, we haven't heard any such things. What the keen part is, after we launched, we had more than 400 promotions we launched in the last one year, I guess, I think 400, close to 400. Whereas previously, we used to hardly do like 20, 30 promotions in a year, which is 400 globally, because Globally, they used to, because we come back and say, oh, the system doesn't support, they used to work with third-party vendors and everything, so we don't know. When end of the month, we have to reconcile everything into one place to find out, okay, how much you have done in the business. Instead of that, now, Aptis is providing one reconciliation of everything from the global product perspective, and the biggest factor is that you don't need to manage independently, it's all in one place. So the, there are a lot of benefits and flexibilities that we've been leveraging it, and we went from 20 promotions we used to do, and we went to like 300 to 400 right now, on right now in the 2017, 2016, close to a year now. We've been doing more promotions right now than we used to do before. So this is a typical slide what we use in terms of how you use your benefits limit. Like we have coupons also, we distribute to our doctors where they enter the coupons, and that tells, so everything is like coupons, your pricing based on their tier levels, how much the volume, order volume they do, and Aptus does automatically calculate for you and we haven't seen much major issues or anything when we actually brought the product and we felt like it's actually glues to what your business needs are. Easy configurable, that's one of the biggest advantage we found out. So most of the research, what we have found and as well as what we're using is typically in line with what other clients are thinking too and that's where I think we have proven from a technology perspective, we want to be much faster and agile to the market and actually it inclines to the research what Moria has shown. So with that, uh, thank you and I would like to hand it back to Moria. Great. Thank you, Leela. So when you add that all up, um, hearing a customer's story and uh, after all the research that we did talking to other customers as well, uh, the benefits of this omni-channel e-commerce uh, portfolio, pr this uh, solution, especially when it's integrated with quote to cash, are clear. We see shortened sales cycles, especially due to the fact that um, the most time-consuming aspect of the sales cycle uh, is now in the hands of the customer himself or herself, uh, which is quote development. We see cost savings by customers being able to either reallocate employees or avoid addi uh, hiring additional employees. We see uh, customers being able to increase visibility for certain aspects of their catalog and drive sales to those areas. We see Im improved employee effectiveness, uh, enabling employees to stop focusing on the sort of mundane ordering aspects of um, the sales cycle and focus on more value-added aspects of their roles. Um, and we see an improved customer experience, which ultimately is the most important thing for driving revenue. Good. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Moira and Leila, for the uh, great presentations. Um, we'll take a couple of questions. We have a few minutes for if any of the audience has questions. Um, thank you. My, my question is for Mora, is, is the report available? And you mentioned that many customers said this or many customers quoted that. Are the customer names that you surveyed in the report 
I'm just curious. No, it's anonymous, actually. It's anonymous? OK. Yes. Okay. Hearing like, myself twice can there. I just ask um, you? Yeah, the report's anonymous. Uh, it is available um, okay. both on Aptus's site um, and also on the Nucleus Research website. Okay. Most of our research um, goes behind a paywall after a certain period of time, but we've actually opened this piece of research up okay. again, um, so you can find it on either website. Okay. I just have a, a, one more question as well for the Invisalign person. Sure. Uh, so when you did the integrations into dental, mm -hmm. you have. Your, your whole industry, they have their own software, dental management software. How well did the e-commerce integrate into the business side of, of the you know, dentist's office? So we have, we have our own order management system that uh, every doctor has to come in and enter their information. And we do integrate with a little bit of DPMS with the dental practice management software. And that market is a wide large because there are so many players in that and it's very hard to integrate with each and every one. So we have a limited integration with, with respect to DPMS, but when they come to the actual our own hosted sites, that's where we hosted our e-commerce platform with integration with Aptus. I assume besides the e-commerce presence here, you also have some other internet sites and that. How have you gone about pulling those together or is it kind of separate where you have your regular internet presence and then people go to this for the, the shopping and buying? So we have different, um, so one is uh, doctors and one is our consumers who is actually willing to look for uh, Invisalign. Um, so that we don't directly sell to the consumers yet. So everything comes to the funnel into the doctor's office. So doctors is our key customers which we sell it and they are the ones who heavily leverage this platform. Does it answer your question? So I'm curious to know more about what your support model is from an IT standpoint. Mm -hmm as well as kind of how you delineate between what the business does as far as configuration and, and running some stuff? Sure. Uh, from an IT standpoint and a marketing standpoint, all the pricing, promotions, everything is managed and configured by the business. And then uh, we have back office admin on the front portal perspective where anything on the UI, UX, adding a product image that has to in line with the Aptus is what is done by the marketing. And in terms of managing the volume, in terms of the inventory and everything, is also done by the management. When it comes, most of the IT work is when they want to make some rebranding changes or anything required to uh, some other changes to the UI perspective or adding functionality changes in terms of the options, remembering the doctor's recent ordered options and all those things is when IT spent on it. But frankly speaking, for the last one year, we've been very stable and we've been uh, using the same product throughout the global because everybody wants to use the same platform. And uh, yes, we have a small pipeline of improvements, but not to the mention that it's a heavy, long cycle, very minor improvements. And then what, what's kind of the skill level required from the marketing folks? I mean, are these people that are already experienced Salesforce in Salesforce? So we did, we did a level of training. Uh, Aptus team was part of the training process. They helped us train some of the marketing folks and some of the IT folks. So IT did do help them, but marketing is a core area. We train them, we use them, but sometimes marketing has some issues. That's when IT is a background for them to helping them in terms of helping the day-to-day -day promotions or configurations. Okay. But expect your marketing has to be buy-in and as well as the business has to be with you, saying that, yep, I'm going to own it. I think that's a shift of the prospective where they come back and say, oh, IT dumping on it, you do it. Instead of the guys, it's a group. It's a collaborative effort that both of us has to do. Can you talk about any challenges that you may have faced um, integrating with your back-end ERP system for fulfillment? Um, so there are different ways. So a little bit challenging is that uh, when it comes to our market, when it comes to Europe and other international markets, they have a third party vendors and uh, we have to write some custom coding in order to integrate with their own APIs for order management because they are the fulfillment and somehow we have third party distributors because for uh, local commercial and regulatory because we're a regulated company we cannot sell every piece of the e-commerce platforms into other markets so we have specific market needs and as well as specific products sold in different markets so we have to integrate with the vendors and that's where the challenging is because if i build a typical one-time integration with an sap done for all but that's not the case because you have to spend a little bit time on integrating with third party vendors and different vendors based on each region or locale. So were you going from the e-commerce system directly to those vendors or were you yes. going through? Yes we do but the pricing and everything is still managed here the only difference is when the order is placed the fulfillment is happening by the distributor because they manage the inventory and warehouse. Okay thank you. So thank you everyone have a okay. great rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks.